Welcome, and thank you for joining me for this extraordinarily rare blue moon. I love blue moons, and especially since this is the 13th moon cycle, which I have covered before in previous videos, this is an exciting time. Coyote is the ruler of this moon, and boy does this chart look like it. Now, Coyote is a sacred animal. 13 is a sacred number of completion. It's like a secret number of completion because the lunar calendar was done away with, and this is the 13th moon cycle or the 13th month that would be included in a lunar calendar. So it is kind of a secret hidden month. And coyote energy is definitely abounding here. Coyote likes to pull the rug out from underneath us, shake us up, wake us up, disrupt whatever we are doing. And this chart is challenging, but harmonious, thank goodness. First off, we have six aspects retrograde. Mercury, Venus, Uranus, Saturn, Neptune, and Chiron. Thankfully, these retrogrades will not last that long, or at least all six of them will not last that long. Venus will go direct on September 3rd, and Mercury will go direct on September 15th. But the Uranus one is retrograde is going to last until January. And just to let you know, when Uranus goes retrograde, things get shaken up pretty badly. So again, we have a lot of uncertainty in this chart. Now, what this means to have so many planets or aspects retrograde is that things are going to be really slow until the third. There will be setbacks and delays. Anytime the planets are retrograde, it's a time for reflection, reassessment, review, and integration of the previous cycles. So this holds the potential for a nice moment to rest. The Leo energy was very intense, and I don't know about you guys, but I felt like I was running a marathon there for a little bit. The moon is at seven degrees of Pisces. Seven is the number of spiritual illumination according to Carl Jung. So we may experience an epiphany or spiritual breakthrough this full moon. Now, as I said, this is a mostly a harmonious chart. There are more positive aspects than there are negative. The moon is conjunct Saturn. This is a fertile time for dreams from the divine. Most people have a negative view of Father Time, but he's also considered the messenger of the creator. Saturn, however, is opposed to Sun and Scorpio, but Jupiter is in a supportive trine. Our life force is in a state of equilibrium. As such, it really depends on the individual and what you bring into this full moon, if this will be a negative or positive experience. The energy itself is balanced out. Mercury in Virgo is being trined by Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. We are really focused on the down-to-earth practical details this full moon. We don't have time for frivolous information. Mars, now in Libra, to obtain justice, is opposed by Neptune and Pisces, but trine Pluto. This is necessary to see change in those Capricornian institutions, but the media narrative doesn't support it. We may be seeing the majority of people thinking in a new way, but conventional institutions will stick to the status quo. Uranus is sextiling Neptune, but it is also trine Pluto that is sextiling Neptune too. These three are really working to change the collective conscious narrative. However, the North Node is squaring Pluto, challenging the doomsday end of the world perspective. Also, Eris is going to be conjunct the North Node. With Eris on the North Node, we have a very uncertain view of the future. Nothing seems solid or reliable. And we're going to see that coming up, especially with it comes to this union strike of the Actors and Writers Guild because usually I use that information to do a prediction for next year. And right now, a lot of those projects seem to be up in the air. So who knows what really is coming down the pipeline? Now, as an oracle stone, which I always pull for each full moon, I pulled green agate. This is a simple but effective heart chakra stone. The soothing green energy helps bring balance and harmony. This stone is one of growth and connecting to nature. When feeling out of balance or too flighty, this stone can help you come back to the center, the heart perspective. If you're looking to grow in any form, personal, physical, or financially, this is the stone to work with. And this is the perfect stone for this full moon because we really do need to be heart-centered during this time. I know that I have experienced setbacks and delays. In the last moon cycle, unfortunately, my dog and my cat died, and then my husband got in a car accident. So it was a very traumatic period of time for me. And then 
luckily we did buy a new car but the day after we drove it off the lot thanks to this mercury and venus retrograde the check engine light came on so i'm going through all of this with you guys it has definitely not been an easy period of time for me but as with all things my personally personal philosophy is that it's only temporary and that's what i tell myself it's only temporary we'll get through it everything changes so have a wonderful full moon and bye for now